Okay, our, our session today, Photo Gifts, the ultimate personalization product. My name is Jimmy Lamb, as David was just saying there, and I'm going to be your presenter here as we talk about some really great ways to make some money uh, doing this. So, you know, the consumer photo marketplace, a lot of opportunity for that, okay, a lot of opportunity, and sublimation is really taking a forefront in that particular marketplace. Uh, in fact, in 2011, I know, statistic is a couple of years old, that's the way they do stats, right? Uh, in 2011, over 30 billion digital photos were taken by consumers, okay? That's an amazing number, 30 billion. How would you like to have 10% of that business, okay? How would you like to have like 0.001% of that business? You're still talking a lot of business. So the reality is that people are taking images, and they're doing things with those images, because more and more, as image and taking has become easier, people are capturing those special moments of life so they can relive them over and over again. Well, electronics are what are kind of driving this, okay? Because if, if you looked around lately, you'll probably realize that everybody has a cell phone. And every cell phone pretty much has a camera, okay? Now, to begin with, cameras kind of on cell phones <laughs> were not considered really good quality. But amazingly, the camera quality has increased. I mean, currently I have a Nokia uh, 928 Windows phone. And I'm telling you, the, the lenses were actually made by a professional lens manufacturer. So they keep taking that level of photography to a higher level. Um, and now I'm able to take a picture of anything as it happens, post it somewhere, or even send it to somebody to have it put on something. Because it's a photo that I really like out of the 1,001 that I took that were useless. I got one good quality image, and I feel like it's worthy of displaying it maybe somewhere in the house on some type of product. And that's, of course, who you're wanting to uh, reach out to. Um, so another aspect of that is mobile, because not only are we talking about mobile phones, which were you know cell phones with cameras, but the reality is there's more and more apps in the marketplace. And as we see more apps in the marketplace, and different programs that, that can interface with some of these particular um, um, devices. Uh, now we're also taking a look at uh, a lot of the, the mobile software, and this is software for devices like cell phones and tablets and whatnot, or even in some cases just internet-based applications, so that you can take that photo and then quickly deliver it to some uh, site where it can be reproduced. And that's one of the things you might want to keep in the back of your mind if you really want to get into photo gifting with sublimation is to say, can I build a, a simplified method for people to get me their photos and put them on the things, okay? Uh, you can be complex, you can be simple, but keep in mind there's a lot of things out there, and as more things get out there, uh, the price is coming down as well. In fact, at a recent trade show, um, we saw someone who set it up where you could take a picture on your smartphone right there at his booth and then wirelessly transmit it over basically to his printer and then the printer printed it out onto a transfer sheet. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's, and it's not that difficult to do, so don't ask me to tell you how right now because I would have to have the right equipment in place. But, you know, those are some things to keep in mind. As our technology advances, it's going to give us more opportunity to help our customers process things. Well, it's all about making money at the end of the day, right? I mean, that's why you're in business. And the question I always have is how many different ways can you turn an image into cash? Because that's what photo gifting is all about, taking great images and turning them into revenue-producing products, okay? Well, if you start looking at some of the things that we're capturing, you know, you have a whole area called everyday life. Okay, just everything that's happening. People capture this all the time. And because we've made it easier to capture and easier to apply, people are taking those images and putting them on the things. Okay? And sublimation, of course, being one of the best ways to do it because of the high quality imaging that we can do with sublimation. You know, there's special moments of life. When something really you know, unique happens, like a wedding or a graduation uh, or some type of an award, you know, these types of things um, carry a lot of value, and thus a lot of potential margin as well, when we capture that special moment and then reproduce it on something. And then believe it or not, we even have people who are heavy in the end of life commemoration, which you know, takes and helps someone remember a loved one through some type of application 
of photography, maybe some text, and then it's put onto some type of substrate uh, that other people can look at and, and remember that person for who they really were. So we have taken all facets of life here that we're trying to cover in the world of photo gifting. And that's the kind of thing I want you to take with you today, is that this is such a broad-based field, and we can break down into different little segments you know, and focus on those, but keep in mind that the overall opportunity for photo-based products and gifts is absolutely huge. Now, it all starts with the power of perception, because when we start talking about perception, um, perception, when it's in a good form, helps us to increase our margin, okay? If someone perceives it as having high value, then you're likely to be able to get that price tag. If they don't perceive it as having high value, then you probably have to cut your price down uh, to meet that expectation. And, and as I to tell people, I said, really what you want to do with a new customer is you want to assume that their expectation or their perception of value of whatever it is you're offering for sale is probably lower than yours. And you'll have two choices in that case. You can either lower your price down to their perception of what it's really worth or raise their perception of value up to your standard price. Okay? That's what marketing's all about. That's what selling's all about. And that's modifying and manipulating people's behavior to make them think what you want them to think. Well, personalization is a great way to do that because when we start talking about personalization, because personalization is very meaningful, custom, right to you know highlight that person's needs or some special occasion, when we personalize it, we give it more value. That's what we're trying to say. It's not every day. It's personalized. Therefore, there is a higher value there. Uh, it's been said that people rarely throw away any product that has a picture of themselves on it. Very true. So when we're adding that picture, like you can see here with this particular uh, product from Mrs. Gomez, Teacher of the Year, um, we're doing a lot of things. We're raising the perceived value. But, you know, for Mrs. Gomez, that's important. Because when she looks back at this, she sees herself at a very special time in her life, and she sees these kids here are going to grow up, you know, and she sees a lot of kids, so it's important. She can see the kids when they were that age and when she was Teacher of the Year, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see the value because if it just said, you know, put your hand over the picture, and if it was just something that said Mrs. Gomez 2011 Teacher of the Year, that's not nearly as effective as when you move your hand back and you see the picture. So that picture added a tremendous amount of value because it raised the perception of the value of that overall product. Okay, So never underestimate the picture, uh, the worth of a picture when you're talking about a personalized gift type of product or even an award product for that matter. Okay, um, That's an important aspect. And you know what? It didn't cost you any more to put it down. Because if you had a big plaque that same size that you were going to sublimate without a picture, it's taking the same amount of materials as if you do have a picture. So you didn't have to put the picture, but the perceived value is probably lower and you made less money. You put the picture, perceived value goes higher, but the cost is the same. So you made more money. Okay, that's an important aspect. You know, what is it worth? That's an important aspect every day. You know, when you look at something like this, what is this worth? You see a blank cell phone cover. Okay? Not worth a whole lot to the average person. You want to go try and sell a blank one like that, they're like, really? Okay, because that's really boring and uninteresting. Um, depending on the brand, there's different product types out there. Uh, depending on which one you're looking at to be able to sublimate, you might be paying anywhere from $1.50 to about $3.25, okay, because there's some differences in the covers and whatnot. All right, so the reality is you'd be hard-pressed to even get that. Three twenty-five. Who wants to pay you three twenty-five for that blank? You know, it probably not. You know, considering everything else you can get. But when you do this to it, this is when you've added the value because of what you put on there, and that's the key here. See the photograph. It's not just text here. It's the photograph. This fantastic photo gift here, and very easy. All I need is a picture of the kid there, and I put in some quick text. Hendrix eighty-eight. Done, and you're ready to go out and sublimate that. So what can you make with that? Okay. Now, this particular iPhone cover I'm referencing is $3.25 blank approximately. You might be using it different. I have a different price. Okay. I'm just giving you some numbers. The area to be able to sublimate that area there is about $0.13. Cents. Labor and overhead, use an arbitrary number of 2 bucks. Total cost there to production is $5.38. $5.38. Now, there are some people out there that believe in doubling things. Okay. $5.38, we'll double it, and that's what we'll retail it for. Really? Because this thing's worth a lot more. You know, the retail consumer price is easily $35 on here. 
Now you might be thinking, really, yourself? Yes, really. The um, range is about $25 to $35 for personalized um, mobile device covers, okay, with a median in there being 30 Now, if you think that seems high because you really haven't gone and looked, let me tell you, I was in Walmart the other day, and they are offering personalized cell phone covers, and you're thinking, oh, geez, i got to come, you know, think with Walmart. Let me tell you what, $29.88, 29 $29.88. I don't want to compete with Walmart. To me, Walmart sets the low bar. I want to set a higher bar. If Walmart's selling for $29.88, well, I do need to sell for $35 because I'm going to give you more personalized service. Okay, so sell for $30 if you wish. But using $35, if it costs you $5.38 to make it and, uh, and you retail it for $35, you're going to make almost $30 off of that. Okay, almost $30. Um, bucks. You're actually going to make $20.62. Okay, we're going to call it $30 because it's easy math. So, if I sold if I sold it for thirty retail, so you see that at the bottom retail, okay. Um, I mean, excuse me, I sold it for thirty five. I'm gonna make thirty bucks. Okay, follow me on that. I got my numbers going crazy there for a minute. And uh, let's say though that you're reselling it, you're selling it to some type of retailer who is you know they're reselling it. Okay, so it's being done for resale. So your wholesale trade price might be thirteen to fifteen dollars. Okay. Even at thirteen to fifteen dollars, you made seven dollars and sixty three cents on it, which isn't too bad for what um, this thing is all about because it's pretty easy to make. But see, the driving force is what's on it. The driving force is where the value is in this particular thing. And yeah, you can get numbers up in that range, you know, with personalized products. And then if you take that and look to another level, is like, what if I'm doing a lot of these? You know, how much time does it actually take to produce one? Um, about three minutes, not including artwork. You may have to do some art time in there. So there may be some setup. It shouldn't be much art work. But if you're just doing one at a time and it took you three minutes, you should do 20 of them an hour. And if you're doing 20 of them an hour uh, and making about $30 each, if you're doing it retail, that's 600 bucks. If you're making uh, more of a wholesale at $15, you're making about, um, oh, and let's see, what did we say? It came out to 763 so we'll call it $8 for easy math times... Uh, you're still making about 160 bucks an hour, not bad. Now, I know you got to go out and have that kind of business flowing in to keep that going. I'm just throwing numbers at you. you. You know that. The point that I really want you to understand with this is that you can do some really nice photo gifts with sublimation that have a, a generally higher margin because it's personalized, and you can put them out pretty quick so you can keep your cost pretty low. Okay, that's, that's what I want you to take away from this particular set of numbers. So your goal really, though, is perception, all about perception. You know, you're personalizing it, but your focus is perception. You want to turn ordinary into extraordinary in everything that you would do because that raises the perceived value, right? So if we're looking... Um, for example, at this right here, we have a cute little girl there. We have the baby picture. And you know, you can sell that. That's just a, a little folding easel. It's been sublimated. You can sell that and make some money with it. But if you take the one on the right and use what I call a digital birth certificate, um, with a digital birth certificate, you're able, able to capture more things. And you're able to give it a little bit more uniqueness, more personalized flavor. Because here you can see a picture of Hannah Elizabeth, and it's got her name on there. And down there in the very bottom of the small script is uh, saying when she was born, her birth weight, the parents, you know, all that kind of stuff. This is a wonderful gift item. And you can put it on virtually any type of su uh, substrate that you have for sublimation. Uh, here it was done on basically what could be used for an award plaque. Okay, So you can choose kind of anything you want to put it on there. Um, a plaque like that costs you know, six bucks. And uh, let's see, you probably got about 50 cents worth of sublimation. And you got you know, maybe two bucks in labor and overhead. And you're going to retail this thing for, again, you know, 30 $35 up there. Okay, because it's all about what you put on there. But really, look at the one on the left, look at the one on the right. The one on the right is going to garner more money because you took ordinary and turned it into an extraordinary. That becomes a recurring thing. Everything that you do, can you enhance that photo? If they give you a photo, the photo in itself is already important, but can you enhance it a little bit more using graphics, especially if you can do templates for your graphics, because now it gives it a little more special flair each and every time. And that's what we're trying to do raise a perceived value. Our production costs don't go up. Our art setup costs may go up a little bit. 
But once you start building templates for things, then you're able to really kind of do a drag and drop with a lot of photos. You don't have to do a lot of work once you get a basic template set up. So that's part of what you need to do is be learning how to use your, your graphic software the right way. You know, here you have something that's certainly worth plenty. Uh, this is, you know, a, this is a, a hardboard type of panel. It's got someone's kid on there. It's a great photo gift, by the way, all by itself. But what if you do this? What if you choose a different substrate and put some graphics into it, give it a little extra flair, you're going to get more money from the one on the right than the one on the left. Now, materials cost the one on the right about $2 more when it's all said and done. But you'll get probably double, potentially double, with the one on the right than the one on the left. Why? Because we not only do we have the photograph, but then we actually enhanced it with extra graphics and a really unique substrate and did take it to a higher level. So graphics are a great starting point because what's on it is what's really selling it, but everything we can do to enhance that raises that perceived value even higher. You know, here's another example you know, of a great photo gift all by itself, but here's a different type of photo gift, which um, here we put more action into it. We have text in there, and, and we've really captured a moment. Okay? We've captured a moment in someone's life, and that is what a photo gift is all about. Okay, capturing those moments, reliving the moments. Uh, you're hard pressed to remember a whole lot about this picture here, you know, especially 10 years from now. Uh, here, there's probably a lot more that you can remember, especially if you drop in a date or something on there as well. Um, it, it really emphasizes what's going on and increase the perceived value. You know, there are a lot of people um, out there selling awards that are engraved. Okay, awards and trophies and stuff. That's a huge marketplace, um, and, and that's. Great. I mean, everybody loves an award plaque, right? But what about a photo award plaque? Okay. Again, it, it falls into that kind of photo gifting thing. You know, the one on the left, you, you see Jerry Farnsworth played for the Wildcats. Okay. Over on the right, you see that Eddie Lewis was not only the MVP, but in the picture, you see why. They captured that moment in time, and then he added some more enhancements to it. Let me tell you, the one on the right costs less to produce than the engraved one on the left. It costs less to produce the one on the right, and it's worth more because of what's on it, okay, because of the perceived value. Uh, and then finally here, you know, see, I live at, uh, by the beach, and, you know, surfers, um, well, they love to surf when the hurricanes come by because that's when the waves are big. So we found out if you go out on the beach and take pictures of these guys surfing, um, then combine it with graphics onto a T-shirt that's basically personalized to them, okay. It's their shirt. They're in it. And you put the hurricane name down below it. You know, you just raise that perceived value again. And you can sell that shirt for a fairly high amount of money. It's not a T-shirt anymore. You know, it's their own personalized memory of something that they did. Okay, so wow, just putting things together that way, easy to produce, uh, makes all the difference. A phrase that I coined years ago when I was working with a major retailer in their gift area uh, for personalized gifts was make it more than a gift, make it a memory. And I'm using it again here to illustrate that point. Make it more than a gift make it a memory. And that's what photo gifts do for us, especially sublimated photo gifts. Because when we start looking at birthday and everyday gifts, and hey, look, there's uh, Hannah Elizabeth again. Maybe that's her brother, the, the Hendrix dude, right? Okay, anyway, you'll see some of the same pictures pop up now and then. But, you know, capturing some of these everyday moments and turning them into birthday gifts and special moments and whatnot, you know, I mean, that's what we're talking about. Sometimes our, our photo gifts are nothing more than just everyday types of things, you know? Or maybe they're a special occasion, or maybe they're for a birthday or whatnot. Uh, and that's important to understand because when you're doing photo gifts, you're really kind of working as a retail uh, instrument out there, so you have to connect with the retail world. Because then you have to think about like Christmas gifts, okay? Christmas is a great time that people give gifts and personalized gifts, make excellent Christmas gifts, and why not sublimated personalized gifts? Um, you know, a lot of times at Christmas, your gifts have a Christmas theme. You'll see three items here that have a Christmas theme. But don't let that slow you down. Don't think like everything at Christmas has to have a Christmas theme, okay? Gift giving is the centerpiece of Christmas. And a lot of times gifts are given that have nothing to do with any type of holiday theme. And remember, we have some different uh, ethnic groups. We have different religions that celebrate things differently. So not everybody's into kids with Santa hats on them and Christmas trees and whatnot. Okay? But the reality of the holiday season uh, is typically it's all about gift giving. And therefore, this is an excellent time to be able to do photo gifts because they're one of the best types of gifts out there. But you know, when you're doing things like, especially Christmas oriented, you know, think about things like long-term recurring income. Okay? No, I'm serious. It's like, uh, what do you see on the stocking there? 08. 
Well, that's reminding you of what year that picture was taken, but it also dates the stocking. You can't use that stocking but so long before you need another one because it's out of date. You know, what do you see down here on the um, iPad cover? You see 2012. Well, you can't use that next year. So what you're doing is you're, you're selling something to somebody and they're capturing the memory of, of you know, that child in, in 2012. Um, but the reality is next year it's out of date. So we need a new one. Dates are important when you're doing things because I use it for recurring income is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, we found that Mother's Day gifts are a strong point for photo gifts every year uh, because they're trying to capture you know, the children. I mean, why not? That's what Mother's Day's, you know, well, it's Mother's Day's about mothers, but they're mothers because they have children. And, you know, here's another great opportunity for you to be selling photo gifts that you're able to sublimate, you know, targeting Mother's Day. Okay, lots of wonderful things we can do there. Uh, graduation, that's always a great time. A lot of pictures taken at graduation. A lot of important memories captured there. Remember, photo gifts are about memories. So, you know, this is another time of year you want to target with programs of being able to reach out to people that are involved with graduation. Weddings, that's a market all by itself. A lot of pictures there. So you start thinking about where's concentrations of pictures taking place and can I create product lines uh, to enter into that particular marketplace. And of course, don't forget about our pets. It's the number two category that Americans spend their disposable income. Um, there's a statistic and I may get the dollars off just a hair bit, but basically in 2012, Americans spent $234 million on their pet costumes for Halloween. Think about that number, okay? So, yeah, there's a big marketplace there for doing personalized pet products. Not really a photo gift to the pet, more of a gift to the pet owner, okay? But, yeah, pets are important. Some of the top sublimated photo gifts out there in the marketplace right now, the mobile device covers seem to be really hanging around there at the top. You know, the um, cell phone covers, the tablet covers, and it seems to be expanding to mugs. Pretty basic, been around forever, but mugs are fantastic because people use them all the time. Uh, mouse pads, you know, more and more people going to their touch pads, but we still see mouse pads out there. Photo panels and photo easels, coasters. You know, coasters sound kind of boring, but when you actually put Special memories on coasters, they're used around the house, and they become great photo gifts. They really do. Uh, ornaments, uh, bag tags, ID tags, license plates, T-shirts, bags and pillows, clocks, serving trays. Um, and that just came from sort of a survey of a lot of different uh, dealers who are servicing the um, photo gift marketplace, you know, as to what seems to be hot. Okay, sublimation brings it to life. Now, some of you already sublimate, some of you don't, so we're just going to touch a little bit on what sublimation is because I know some of you, you're not really sure what sublimation is. That's why you're here. So sublimation is a great tool for bringing this to life. I mean, first of all, we do need to define sublimation. You know, sublimation is really all about chemistry. It is a digital printing process, but it's uniquely different than other processes that you find in the marketplace. You need processes like screen printing, direct-to-garment printing, uh, UV printing. You know, they're all using different types of technology to apply ink to a surface. Uh, with sublimation, we're not applying ink to a surface. We're actually embedding the image into a subsurface level. Okay? And I'm going to explain how that works here in a second. One of the things to understand with most digital printing inks is the inks themselves um, every ink has a limit to what it will bind with or what it will attach itself to. And in most cases, binders have been added in uh, chemically to the inks to enable the ink to actually stick to a surface. And that's why most processes use heat, because the binder is something activated with heat. For example, direct to garment printing. You print onto a t-shirt, then you put it under a heat press or put it on a dryer to dry the ink. No, you're using that to activate the binders so that it permanently bonds or the best of its abilities to the surface of that shirt. We don't use any of that with sublimation because we're depending on a molecular bonding process. So with sublimation, we're going to use an inkjet printer, a standard off-the-shelf inkjet printer that will sublimate inkjet, um, excuse me, sublimation printing. Not every printer will. We're going to use a standardized inkjet printer. We're going to load it with sublimation dye. We're going to print onto a very special transfer paper made specifically for sublimation. Nothing else. It only is designed for sublimation in this case. In other words, don't confuse it with other types of transfer paper. Uh, we're going to print that image out pretty quick. We're going to take that piece of transfer paper and whatever it is that we want to put that image on, put the two together under a heat press set for most products at 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, with a medium pressure and apply it for about one minute. 
Uh, during that application process, the sublimation dye that makes up the graphic image uh, turns into a gas, number one. Number two, sublimation will only bond because it's a molecular process. It's chemistry, okay? So sublimation will only bond with polyester fibers or polymers. That's it. It doesn't bond to wood, metal, glass, cotton, um, you know, all those different types of things. It only bonds to polyesters and polymers. So all of our products, we'll touch more on this in just a second, that we sublimate do need to be either natural, polyester, polymer base, or have some type of coating. But we'll cover that in just a moment. Okay. So at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, our sublimation dye turns into a gas, number one. And those polymers, number two, the cells actually open up. So when those polymer cells open up, it receives the gas of the sublimation internally into that polymer cell. When we remove the heat and the pressure, as in pull the item out from under the heat press, those polymer cells close back up and they contain the uh, sublimation dye within that cell. You get a permanent high resolution coloriz colorization that won't peel or crack over time. And it won't fade when washed in the case of apparel. It's not UV resistance. If you put it out in the sunlight, it will fade over time. But as far as normal washing, it will not when we're talking about apparel. Remember, it's in the surface instead of on the surface. We cannot scratch it off with our thumbnail. That's pretty important. Okay, and by the way, that transfer paper, it's not a decal. When you finish under the heat press, you pull the paper off and throw it away because the ink is transferred. That's how it works, okay? And it can give us high-quality imaging, high-resolution imaging, very important. So sublimation, if you compare it to some of the other things you may be involved with, it's a quick setup. Unlimited colors, there's always unlimited colors, but within reason there's thousands of colors you can reproduce. No special skills required, no color separations if you're coming from an industry like screen printing that depends on that. And it's great for short run production. Okay? Now the polymer connection I was just mentioning, um, the products that you sublimate must be natural polyester or have some type of polymer coating. Now the reality is we have hundreds and hundreds of things in the marketplace that have been produced specific for sublimation. And they may be wood, but they have a polymer coating. It may be metal, but they have a polymer coating. It may be glass, but they have a polymer coating. So that's the key, has that polymer coating. And there's literally, like I said, hundreds of different items that make great photo gifts. When you're talking about apparel, it only works in polyester. It does not work with cotton. Please keep that in mind. You can sublimate blends, but the image will look somewhat faded, sort of a retro look. Great special effect, but not necessarily when we're reproducing photographs. If we're trying to reproduce photographs for photo gifts, you really want to stick with 100% polyester. If you're new to the world of, uh, of apparel and if you're like me when you hear polyester you think of something that's slick, silky, looks and feels like nylon more or less, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you may, may not like that material and you may have bad memories of having worn something that was actually hot and uncomfortable that was polyester. Well never fear, the polyester of today has advanced tremendously and most of the polyester products that, that we see in the marketplace are actually poly performance products, which means they have moisture wicking capabilities, which means they breathe really well, much better than cotton. We have companies like Under Armour out there who've really made the name for poly performance products, which is useful for you because you can reference Under Armour and it helps set the perception of value and the corresponding price tag that goes with that. Okay, that's important because when you're selling poly performance t-shirts, it's not equivalent in any way to a 50-50 or 100% or cotton t-shirt. Totally different world, okay? Uh, so when we're talking about apparel, you do have a little bit more limitations because it needs to be polyester based, but you definitely want to look at the poly performance products because they're a much higher quality product and they're ideal for sublimation. And of course, picture perfect reproduction is our whole focus today is photo gifts. But really and truly, sublimation is a high def process. And Keeping that in mind, you can reproduce some awesome images. Uh, we have ProPhoto, which is a little different from photo gifts, but the professional world of photography, of the high-end photography, they depend on sublimation all day long. Okay, and that, that's a whole other discussion of working with the pro photo industry, but you can certainly do that. You know, they're doing these large murals that are going in sports arenas and the lobbies and whatnot using wide format sublimation techniques because it's that good. They're doing wedding portraits now with sublimation because it's that good, uh, provided the initial image is that good. So we really refer to it as a high def process because it truly is. In the um, day, there's tons and tons of products and applications and markets for sublimated 
photo gifts and more you know just keep that in mind it's just so big and broad lots of opportunity so real quickly again for those that are new to sublimation let me just show you the process real quick so you understand the production process because I don't know if I'm just talking about sublimation you're like okay you told me how it works but I really can't visualize this so I'm just going to give you a vision real quick so you understand uh, typically sublimation you're going to need three components you're going to need a computer most of you have that you're going to need a uh, inkjet printer that's equipped with sublimation dies as in the cartridges um, by the way the, these printers are not like a high-end twenty-five thousand dollar direct garment printer okay we're talking printers that start you know printer packages start in five fifty five seventy five uh, David can tell us more about what what Jato has specifically but when you're talking about just printer by itself you know to mid to upper five hundreds is typically what your startup cost is not including a heat press now a heat press will be more expensive but you want to buy a good 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 quality heat press okay great 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 quality heat this is a chemistry process please remember that with sublimation chemistry process it depends on a reaction caused by temperature time and pressure as long as you have that consistently done every time you're going to get the best transfer of sublimation dye when you have inconsistencies in those variables and you have inconsistencies in imaging so I encourage you to research and buy the best quality press you can jato has got a great selection and they can help you with that those are our three pieces of equipment that we need to get this thing done okay so we see it as a three-step process we call it create print and press the first step is well, create just like it sounds um, a lot of our sublimatable products have weird shapes to them and keep that in mind because the first time you're doing this graphically if you're not really sharp on your graphics you're entering that learning curve you start to wonder how do I make a square image round okay uh, a lot of the products that are made for sublimation the manufacturer offers uh, templates that can be downloaded in this case we're going to do a coaster with this beautiful frog okay but we're going to do a coaster it's a round coaster and I went ahead and downloaded um, the template from the manufacturer now this is the template right here for the exact coaster that they offer for sale now, if I'm using Corel Draw, because I know Corel Draw better than I do Photoshop, but if I'm using Corel Draw, I can download this in a CDR format, which is a true vector format for Corel, and I download it, and it's in the exact dimensions of the final product. And then I'm going to take my image, I put the two on the screen at the same time. I can overlap the two, I can combine them, and then use the power clip function. And what it does is it crops and sizes the image to fit that template shape. Okay. Now, when you look at the template, you see that there's blue and there's green in there. Why is part of it blue? Why is part of it green? In sublimation, we normally make our artwork slightly larger than the actual substrate. The blue represents the true size of the coaster. The green is the overbleed. So that shows us how much extra to make um, our image in size when dealing with this. Pretty quick process. I use Power Clip for Corel Draw. Photoshop used Layers function. Um, I got a couple of videos on that that you can reference online um, on the Sawgrass website, for example. Real quick and easy, 30 seconds for either one of these processors for the most part. Okay, we set up our artwork. We're looking at what we're going to print out. We, we always try to print out as many things together as we can using our copy and paste function because we make better use of our production efficiency and our papers and everything else. So here you can see I was using 8.5 by 11 sheet of transfer paper, sublimation transfer paper, and I figured out I could get four of these coasters on there. So I printed it out before. We do it in a mirror. Um, we use our mirror function, so it prints basically in reverse. And I got four images. First time you ever do this, you're going to be shocked at the color because it's going to not look very good. You don't see the brilliance of sublimation color until after it's gone through the heating process. So what comes out of the printer is usually sort of a dull, muted look. That's okay. Don't worry about that. So here we're taking the coasters, and um, we're actually using a little piece of heat tape. Now we're just tr securing the coaster to the paper. It looks like scotch tape. It's not. Don't get it confused. Scotch tape doesn't work for 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, uh, so this is high temperature um, tape, you know, specifically for this process. What we want to do is we want to make sure that the coasters don't slide around off the artwork as we set it up on the a heat press. So we usually use one or two pieces of tape per item. You can see the artwork sticking out from under. As I told you, the artwork's larger than the coaster. Okay, and then we go over to our heat press, and we place that sheet onto that heat press and set the heat press for in this case 400 degrees Fahrenheit for one minute with a medium pressure it can be some differences with some of the different products but that's what our typical setup is we close that up the sublimation process begins when we open it back up when we're finished at one minute uh, we immediately tear the paper away from those substrates it's the hot peel process you got to do it while it's hot and then we're left with in this case four excellent 
coasters. Okay, it took me about two to three minutes to do that total production. Not bad. Okay, uh, not bad at all. Okay, so in addition to the great graphics, we we're talking about graphics. And I was really forcing on you the concepts of imaging, graphics, pictures. That's what makes it raise a perceived value. But also always be thinking about different types of substrates that you can use. Okay, making it interesting. So it's not just the image, but everything else out there. And you know, I've mentioned several times already about the iPhone covers, the Galaxy covers, the tablet covers, and whatnot. Those are you know some of the hottest products out there. But use some really creative marketing while you're at this, okay? Because here, for example, is one type of a product, um, iPhone cover product, where it's composed of a frame and then interchangeable keyword interchangeable metal. Uh, panels and the middle of panels are where sublimated. So the idea is that you're selling to the customer and you're pointing out that, hey, listen, you're not just doing a personalized phone cover. You want to be able to show your moods as much as anything. You want to have be able to have different themes on different days. You know, maybe today you feel this way, tomorrow you feel a different way, and you want to be able to switch these things out. See where I'm going with this? You don't want them to buy one. In this case, you want them to buy three. You want to sell it instead of three, so that they got three interchangeable panels. Why do you want to do that? Because you just raise the total uh, amount of revenue coming in for one job. So that's the kind of thing you want to start thinking about is upselling people as well as cross-selling people, but upselling people into larger packages, and that's part of thinking outside the box, okay, doing that with a personalization aspect. Um, you can do that same with thing with the uh, iPad-type covers. Because when we're talking about tablet covers, it's the exact same concept, man. You know, you're able to, this is what people do, think that they, they, they change their Facebook picture all the time. So, of course, they want to be able to change their iPad picture and their iPhone picture, too. Okay, that's just general marketing. They already understand that because they change those photos that represent them and, and what mode they are in life all the time on all of their social media. So, apply that to the retail model as well. Uh, the acrylics are something fairly new out there, and it doesn't mean you want to sell acrylics, but keep in mind, always be learning what the new products are. You know, visit Jato, see what they've got going on. You know, visit some trade shows and, and talk to, you know, your, your representatives there and, and see kind of what's new and what's hot and what's different, what's showing up. You know, some of these new glass and acrylic products are neat because you sublimate them on the back, but you're seeing the image all the way through. And it doesn't really look three-dimensional, but it gives it a very interesting depth perspective, okay, which raises the perceived value, is what we're trying to say. Tile murals, I mean, they're very much a specialty. But uh, you can capture true photos on here. This one's really more of a graphic. Uh, but the amount of money that you can produce here is e extreme because it's now on a big scale. This was done as a six foot by eight foot. The total materials cost, including hanging it on a wall, I think it was about six hundred dollars. Uh, but they sold it for six thousand. <laughs> That's pretty good markup. And there we go. You know, people ask me all the time, "Well, how do they do that?" Okay. Um, that doesn't fit in a flat press. Doesn't fit in a mug press. No, there's a, there's a product called a mug wrap, and it's designed to let you uh, sublimate a mug in a convection oven. And so you still attach the transfer to the mug, a mug that has a polymer coating, of course. And then you stretch the wrap all the way around, and it latches, and you tighten it down, and it holds it and puts the pressure on that transfer as you stick it into a convection oven. Well, lo and behold, somebody said, "Why don't we make bigger wraps, and we can do bigger rounded stuff?" And that's how things like this are done. Uh, there's a cookie jar in the marketplace that has a polymer coating, and it's done, again, with the wraps. So it's thinking outside the box of where there's some of these new things going on that, that I can do. You know, don't discount um, just pure photography that becomes sort of an interior decoration. Yeah, you know, these were all done using aluminum panels. And grand, the one in the middle is pretty big, and it was done with um, a wide format printer. But the other two were done with a large Rico, and you know metal panels. You can do that, you know. Uh, so you can do all kinds of neat home decor, kind of professional looking things. You know, never discount fabric. I mean, a lot of times we say fabric, we're thinking of apparel. This is a pillow that was made by the, the seamstress made the actual pillow the sublimator bought polyester fabric and sublimated it with the images here of these uh, two wonderful pets and then the seamstress made the pillow that sold for I think about $150 okay <laughs> had a few dollars worth of material and uh, in this case maybe a dollar's worth of, of ink and paper 
you know. And probably those dogs are lying on the pillow at home somewhere. Okay, but anyway, uh, and that's what I'm talking about. Is like you know, you, you if you couldn't find a sublimatable pillow, find a seamstress that can make the pillow. All you got to do is make the image. Okay, summing it all up here. Why get into photo gifts? Well, there's lots of reasons, but you know the explosion of new camera devices. You know, just look at what people are doing pictures. I mean, look at the websites out there, the social sites. I mean, you know, it started with Facebook, and now people are tweeting pictures left and right. And they got Instagram and Pictogram and Pinterest, and you know, the list is huge of what people do with their photos. And yes, people like to take the best of the best photos and then put them onto products that are part of their life instead of just going online. Um, there's a lot of you know interesting programs and things out there that make it easier for people to get a photograph to you, you know, so that you can be developed. And of course sublimation does a great job. It's a low cost solution. It does a really good job there. You know, diversify and grow. Uh, that's the key. We have more and more sublimation products opening up. You get people thinking about photo gifts and you get them started with it and then they start coming back and looking for more. Um, and as well you have a lot of cross selling and upselling opportunities. So that's where sublimation all fits into this. A lot of good opportunities there. You just need to explore, especially with the Christmas season is already on us. You've probably already seen the commercials. You know, if you haven't already figured out a Christmas plan now, you're probably a little bit behind. You know, but here's a great time for people that don't know the right gift. You can't figure out what to get grandma. I'll tell you what, get her a sublimated photo gift. Okay. You know, get her a picture of her grandchildren doing anything. And that's the perfect photo, um, product for the holiday season. You want to keep that in mind. Okay. With that said, I'm going to get David back in here. Um, that kind of wraps up what I wanted to present today. And I do appreciate you coming out. appreciate uh, everybody kind of making it through those first little technical issues we have because we, we did them. We got through them. And, you know, we're back here and um, ready to take any questions that you have. And uh, this is also being re has been recorded, so it will be available for review again later on the Jato website. So, David, I think you're back with us now. I am. Thank you, Jimmy, for that uh, wonderful presentation. I'm sure you've given everybody out there lots of great ideas of how to uh, earn some more money out of their sublimation systems. And uh, a couple of just very quick things. Everything that Jimmy has pretty much shown in his presentation, Jotto offers. So all of those blank, wonderful blank items that you've seen are available. If you want to check them out in more detail, find out what the pricing of those items are. Um, for you, those of you in the United States, go to uh, www.jottopaper.com. And uh, for those of you in Canada, it's uh, www.jottopaper.ca. And uh, not only that, for those of you who do not already have uh, sublimation systems, you'll also see a wide range of different uh, startup packages, uh, starting from you know as low as five hundred and sixty-five dollars for the smaller sublimation printer. Um, but there are also we've got packages there that have um, mug presses, t-shirt presses, and when it's all combined, um, you get a much better price on buying them as a package and buying them as individual components. Um, Jodo now also has uh, six, six uh, shipping locations across uh, North America, and just to quickly go through that list, we've got Blaine, Washington, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, Akron, Ohio, Nashville, Tennessee, and then for our Canadian customers, we have Vancouver and Mississauga. So pretty much everybody now is only a two-day ship uh, anywhere from one of those six locations. Um, so yeah, as Jimmy mentioned, um, if you guys have any questions, uh, please uh, type those up and, and either Jimmy or myself will be able to help you with those uh, answers to those questions. Uh, back to you again, Jimmy. Okay, David, just want to make sure I got your email right there because last time it seemed like I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so you want to make sure correct. people actually can contact you. See, that's important. Yeah, So no, uh, that, that, uh, that email address is correct. Perfect. And, um, if if you if the questions come up as well after this, uh, you know when we go away, you might suddenly think of something you should have asked. Um, our one eight hundred number is one eight hundred five six five five six eight six.